Here, I'm gonna show you how to make an unfinished work reminder in Excel. Let's say that you forgot to fill in an important field and you go to send the email invoice like we learned last week. Nope, invoice not complete. So it's going to prevent you from sending this incomplete invoice. But what about if you wanna go and print it? We can also make it so that we perform the check here and invoice not complete so it won't print. And the third way I'm gonna show you how to use this feature is what if you have a multi-tab form that you want someone to complete and you wanna make sure they fill in everything. So if they forgot something here and they go to the next tab, next form, oops, invoice not complete. And we've sent them back here to complete it. Now I'm gonna walk you through all of the code involved. It's not that difficult and it's a very easily repeatable pattern. But if you wanna learn how to automate your workbook like this and so much more, then I highly recommend that you check out my full VBA and macro course. It'll take you from beginner. If you have never seen a line of code, it's perfect, it's for you, all the way to intermediate and expert level. So you can do everything you see here and so much more without ever having to watch a tutorial again. It's a really comprehensive course and I'll put a link to it below this video and it may even be on sale, so check it out. Now let's get into how do we make this work. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna make one core piece of code and then put it in three different places so we can do everything I showed you at the beginning of this video. And the first thing to do is to figure out what fields are important for you. So how about invoice ID? Uh, that's pretty important. And we've named this cell invoice ID so we can reference it that way from within the code. Email is going to be pretty important, invoice email. And for invoice four, pretty important. And then we're also going to make sure that this cell right here, A14, has something in it. So I'll show you two different ways to reference that. Now once you've figured that out, let's go to the code and first up, how to stop it from printing until it's completely filled out. Alt F11. And this is the VBA window. If you've never seen it, make sure to have the Project Explorer visible. Go to View, Project Explorer. What we wanna do is to go to your project, open up Microsoft Excel Objects, and double click this workbook. A little window will open up and this is our code for the printing section. It's not difficult, I promise you it's an easily repeatable pattern. And if you download this file, you're going to get comments throughout the code, which will be very helpful when you're trying to change it for yourself. So check the link to teachexcel.com below this video and download the file. But what I'm gonna do here is to clear everything out and we're going to build this macro from scratch the first time and then adjust it for the other things that we wanna do. So navigating away from the worksheet and sending the invoice. It's going to be very similar. And the first thing that we wanna do is to get the section of code that will run when the user goes to print. So we go up here where it says general and click a workbook. It'll default to workbook open, but we go over here and we can go to the top and click before print. Then we can remove workbook open. We don't need that. Events are amazing, by the way. It's really nice to play around with these and see all the cool things you can do in Excel. And my full VBA course has a really nice section on events as well. So those of you taking that course will know exactly what's going on. So all of this code right here, it runs when the user goes to print, but before anything is actually printed. And we've got this great little thing right here, cancel, which we can use to stop the printing. So all we need to do is to set up our code to check whatever we wanna check. Hey, I wanna make sure you have a four and an email and an invoice ID, or else I don't want you to print this because it's incomplete. So we're gonna set up a structure that will allow us to do that. And the first thing is to make a couple variables. And we're gonna make this guy WS invoice for our invoice worksheet. That's where we're going to store the reference to that. And then we'll make a great little variable here that's going to be set to a true or a false, a Boolean invoice ready. And what we're going to do here is to actually set invoice. I'm gonna hit control space to fill that in since I declared the variable. We're gonna set invoice ready to true right now. What that means, by default, our invoice is ready. Now this variable means nothing yet, but lower in the code, we will use to check this variable to see if our invoice is ready or not. So we set it to true right now, so it will be in that default state. Then we're gonna perform a bunch of checks. If those checks fail, you didn't input something, 
then we set this guy to false. Then we don't allow whatever action the user wanted to be completed, in this case, printing. So uh, that is the structure of the code. It's a very simple to use. Now let's go ahead and set WS invoice equal to oh, worksheets. And this is just the name of our worksheet as you see it in the tab. It's gonna make references much, much easier. And now we're ready to make some checks. So let's go ahead and check first off if there's anything in our invoice, a billable item. So we go if, we reference our invoice or worksheet, WS invoice, and then we go dot range, and then the cell that we care about. Remember A14 was, if we hit Alt F11, this cell right here. So let's make sure you input something in the invoice that you can bill for. And we reference it like this, range A14. But now what do you wanna do? Well, I'm gonna check the value and I'm just gonna see if it equals nothing. And end if. And what do we wanna do if this equals nothing? Set invoice ready to false. And this is how we're going to do our checks. And we can have as many of them as we like. You wanna add another one? We can copy this guy, paste it in, and maybe we wanna have two items, so A14 and A15. Now all we do here is to check if it's empty. If you wanna make sure that it equals a certain value, how about ABC, you could check that. And then there are many, many, many other things that you can check here. I covered in my full VBA course. It's a bit beyond this tutorial because there's just so many different things you can do, so many different comparison operators, and then other functions in VBA as well, including functions to check if it's empty. There's a lot that you can do, but if you follow this basic structure, it's going to make it much easier to do all of that. So we're gonna keep it simple, check if it's empty. And now what I wanna do before I add a bunch more of these checks is let's add the final piece of code that's going to prevent the printing from actually happening. So that's a very nice little thing. Remember we have invoice ready, we're gonna be checking it throughout our code, but at the end we need to check it to see if we should do something. And how do we do that? We could do if invoice ready. So if that's set to true, then we want to do something but we don't always just wanna make a little check like this. And in this case, we don't. We want to check if the invoice is not ready. So the reverse of what this is going to return. An easy way to do that, not. So if this is not ready, uh, then we run this code. And what do we wanna do? Well, the first thing is to stop the printing. So we use cancel. Cancel equals true. And now the printing actually won't happen. But don't forget to tell the user what's going on or they will be confused. How about invoice not complete? Short and simple. And this is the framework for all of the code in this tutorial. Now if we go back here, delete the value in A14 and go to print, control P, print, Invoice not complete. Even if we put something up here, not complete, perfect. Alt F11. And now all that I'm going to do is to put a few more checks right in here. I'm gonna copy paste it and explain the one tiny difference. We have three new checks added, one for the ID, email, and the for field. And the only difference here is that these were named cells. So instead of typing A14 or whatever range reference there, we type the actual name of that cell. Everything else is the same. And now that we have this code, we can go ahead and finish out the other scenarios. So when you go to send an invoice, and when you go to navigate away from the worksheet. Let's go for navigating away from the worksheet first. That's a really fun one and pretty easy to do. So all we wanna do here is to grab this code and copy it. We're gonna to go to a new part of our workbook, go to the Project Explorer, open up Microsoft Excel objects and double click the worksheet that you care about. In this case, the invoice worksheet. And here we have the code. Uh, let's go ahead and delete it and start from scratch. First up, general. We want that to be a worksheet. 
and selection change, we want that to be deactivate. So basically, go away from the worksheet. And you can use whatever event you want for this. There's many different things that you can do. It's a very interesting. So here we have our code and we have a tiny little change to make. Everything up here is good. All the code that's going to check everything is good. And for those of you now that have seen me copy and paste the same code twice in the workbook, yes, you could put this in one location and call it very easily and do some other slightly more complex things with the code. But here I wanna keep it simple. Making the code more efficient and your life a little bit easier is covered in the full VBA course. Otherwise, I'm gonna be talking here forever, and the course has over 200 tutorials that cover all sorts of things. But now, let's go over the little tiny change that we have to make. Everything is good except for this. We don't have a print to cancel. There is no cancel up here. So what we are going to do is to use a great little thing called me. If you're inside of a worksheet module like this, me refers to that specific worksheet, and all that we wanna do is activate it. So what is that gonna do? That, the moment you leave, will send the user back. So be careful how you use this guy and make sure that you have a message box that says, hey, invoice not complete. So now, we go here, we try to leave, next form, it sends you back here. You didn't see that this time, but that's what happened. And it says, invoice not complete. So once you have the base code, it's very easy to do everything. Now let us go and make this one work. Send invoice. We have a couple more changes to make, but it's not too difficult. What we wanna do here is to go into a module because this one's not running on a certain event. It runs when the user clicks a button that we made and we attached that button previously to send email invoice PDF. Here is the code that we're gonna create. I'm gonna delete it so we can do it from scratch. Since we don't have an event, we create our own little sub right here. And let's call this guy, check invoice, enter. And there we go. And we'll paste in the code. Well, once again, everything stays the same except for the very end. This time, what we wanna do is to say, hey, if the invoice is ready, I wanna run this macro right here. Check the link below this video to get to this tutorial, by the way, where I explain how it works. It's really cool. Click the button, it creates a PDF and automatically emails your invoice. So we want to do something if the invoice is ready and this time if it's not ready. So we can change the structure here. If invoice is ready, then do something. If it is not ready, else, then do something else. So not ready and ready. And do make sure to comment your code so you know exactly what's going on. I talk about that a lot in the full course. More comments are better than no comments. And let's finish up the not ready. All we need to do here is to show the user a message. Hey, it's not ready. What do we do if it is ready? We run this macro down here. So just type the name of the macro, start typing it, control space, send email invoice PDF. And that's it. Three little changes and this guy's ready to go. Of course, last thing for this one, Alt F11, make sure the button points to the new macro that we made. So right click, assign macro, check invoice. Okay, click away, click, there you go. Invoice not complete. If I fill it in, something. First, we can navigate away, just fine. It's really interesting how you can stop people from leaving a worksheet tab, I think. So yeah, be careful with that one. But also we can click this now. And we get our invoice in PDF form ready to be emailed. It's amazing how much more power we can add to our workbooks with just a few lines of code. And make sure to go to teachxl.com to download this workbook. And if you want to learn more about VBA and how to automate your workbooks, check the link to my full Excel VBA course as well. It takes it from beginner to intermediate to expert level. 200 tutorials, over 200 downloadable files, all heavily commented and explained. It's going to make your life much easier in Excel. Now the last thing I'm gonna do at the very end here, 
someone asked me about making these buttons and so let's show you how to do that real quick insert illustrations shapes a rounded rectangle click it and type something if it's too big make it bigger home tab center center click away right click assign macro check invoice okay and now you have a working button and that's all for this tutorial if you liked it please make sure to give it a thumbs up subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can get all of my new tutorials have a good one and i'll see you next time